panel on Pandora. It's always a challenge sometimes on Pandora. Get ready for Friday, and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. But Sherry, are you out there? All right, come on in. This is your time to shine. We are a wonderful um, breakfast was sponsored by um, American Home Shield, I believe. Right? Yeah. Good. All right, Sherry, <laughs> tell us what's happening. Hi. Well, first I just want to introduce myself. I'm Sherry Baker. I'm fairly new to American Home Shield to you guys. Just want you to know that I'm here for you. I actually do live here in the Kingwood area. Um, and yes, I do answer my phone on the e in the evenings and on the weekends. If for some reason it goes to voicemail, give me a chance and I'll call you right back if you have anything going on. And I just wanted to let you guys kind of know some of the different things that we have. Um, for you guys to help you guys market your business and to become successful. We have all different kinds of things out there. Um, we have, you know, the uh, door protectors. We have, if you're farming um, a neighborhood and it has the preparations where you can actually put your business cards in there and, you know, work whatever neighborhood you might be wanting. Um, we have things that are for, like, your buyer packets and your listing packets. Um, just I, things like um, how much items actually expense or how much they cost if you were to actually have to replace them. So those big items, those dishwashers, those appliances, those air conditioning units, the, things like that can help you. Um, benefits for the buyer and um, benefits for the home seller. So you can put those in your packets like if you're uh, going out to a listing. We have all those kind of good things. Um, some of the other ones that I think that everyone really seems to like are these helpful hints for selling your home. So like decluttering, um, curb appeal, all those things that sometimes they don't like to really hear you say it, but it's helpful sometimes if it's in a, <laughs> in a non-biased uh, book to help you. And also uh, making yourself at home and maintenance guides, like say for instance, the, uh, the electric plug won't work, or what are some things you can do to check this? Different things like to help them before they actually call a repairman out or before they call a home warranty. So all kinds of different little marketing materials for you guys. Um, I think everybody's probably very familiar with our plans. We've had the Flex Plan Combo, which is probably the most popular. It's been out there uh, for a couple years now for 475. It covers all those things, all those major appliances on all those components, like your air conditioning, your heating, your ductwork, your plumbing, um, rust and corrosion, insufficiently maintained equipment, which is huge, um, mismatched systems, um, like air conditioning units, plumbing, a lot of times they'll just put whatever they have in the truck to get it running, and a lot of the warranty companies um, don't warrant that. We do. Um, so that plan's still out there, 475. Um, also, some of the code violations, some of the codes are constantly changing. We'll cover up to 250 per contract. Um, permits, again, 250, um, and then that's per occurrence. Um, then undetectable pre-existing conditions is a huge one. So when we do cover that as well, um, um, also, a removal of equipment, like if you think of those big water heaters up in the mm -hmm. attic, mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll go up there and there'll be two there, <laughs> one's an old one, one's a new one, or they you can have it um, replaced or fixed and they're, they're going to tell you it's going to cost you an extra X amount to get that out because they are heavy. Um, so we will do those kind of things as well too. So, and also... Uh, we are very excited. Coming out in October, we have a new plan that's going to be coming out. Um, I'll just give you yeah, information on it. Um, but uh, one of the things that people like, they say, well, you know, I think that this needs to be covered in this particular plan, or we want a more competitive pricing, et cetera, et cetera. So we're really excited. We're going to have the new Shield Essential, uh, Shield Plus, and um, Shield Complete. Um, but the exciting thing is it's going to be a great prize. I'm not going to tell you exactly yet. I'll tell you closer when it gets to the time. Um, but all those things that you guys have been asking for, those things that most are most common problems and warranty issues are going to be covered on that the Shield Essential at a great price. So tell so the kind of the most common things that happen. The most common things, yeah. yeah. So I mean, rather than hugely comprehensive, <laughs> it's more pointed, but it covers some of the items that more frequently right. come up. It's going to be like air conditioning, heating, deck work, plumbing, electric, water heaters, lack of maintenance, rust and corrosion, sediment, uh, refrigerant recapture, reclaim, and disposal, removal of defective equipment, mismatch systems, undetectable pre-existing conditions, improper installation repairs and modifications, those permits and code violations. Um, so that's going to be covered in that essential plan. And then they can cover everything else 
depending on what they like, if they want to move and add on to it with their washer and dryer, refrigerator, et cetera, they can do all those kind of things as well too. And of course, with us, as you know, uh, you, once they say, for instance, at uh, at close, they decide they just want the essential plan. Well, they have 60 days to add anything else to it. So if they want to upgrade it, they can. If they want to add just a septic or water softener or something like that, they can do that within that 60 period and still get the discounted pricing. Um, and just to remind you guys, um, the real estate transaction pricing is discounted off of our direct-to-consumer. So if somebody were to go on the website, it's going to list the direct-to-consumer pricing and plans. So you always want to have to make sure you hand in one of those brochures or have them call me and I can send them, I can send them information on the PDF file or whatever it's better if you are answering those questions. So. Okay. Any questions for Sherry? Yeah, I got one. Okay. You said pre-existing conditions. Undetectable. Undetectable. Undetected. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a client last year that had a different home warranty company, but my question is, um, they got into the plumbing. They ripped a hole in their ceiling and found out that it was around the flange around the commode was leaking, and um, they didn't cover it. And then they had already ripped a hole in the ceiling, so then my client had a hole in the ceiling and a broken hole to go on top of that. Okay, so like say, let me give you an example of when we would cover that and when we wouldn't cover that. Say for instance, you, you wake up and you see that there's a wet water spot. You know that there's obviously something going on. We're going to cover that. Now, if there's a water spot that's been there a while, then maybe a little hole that's been patched and painted over a couple times, well, we know that's a known condition. Um, another one, I just had one, uh, actually it was a week and a half ago, and the realtor was very upset with me, and the homeowner was very upset with me, the new homeowner. Um, they wanted to know why we weren't going to cover their air conditionings. Their air conditionings were having issues, Well, when they and they purchased, they just purchased this home. There were vines and plants growing out of the air conditioning units, and they wanted to know why I was going to cover that. Well, obviously, if you would just take a look. <laughs> you mean they're going to green? And that's I was like, are you serious? And they're like, well, you should cover everything. And again, it's not a bumper to bumper, um, whatever. We like If we repair, like we talk about that ceiling, we know that it's a brand new condition. Well, well I mean, a, a new issue that's happened, we're going to, we're going to repair it back um, to a rough condition. We're not going to put it like it's a, we're not going to retexture it, and we're not going to match paint or anything like that. We're not going to do that. We're going to cover those. Um, so major components. Major okay. components and sexual items. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. What is your average turnaround time? Because I know a lot of times there's um, an emergency per se, and then you all can't get to it that quick, and so we'll have to seek someone. What's the turnaround time to be refunded for that? And to be refunded? Yes, because a lot of times, so for, for me, for instance, if they AC, not the AC, but let's say a um, plumbing issue just happened at my home in the middle of the night on a weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, your vendors are not, you know, it's a different type of cost versus the weekday. And so it was, well, we can't get the one right now. So go ahead, find someone, and then we'll replace. And then if we're if we're, t if we're telling you we can't get anybody and to go ahead and send somebody out, um, what you have to do is you have to send an invoice either to me or directly into the home right. office, and you'll get your check back within seven to fourteen okay. days. So it's seven to fourteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like so, like say for instance, like um, weekends can be difficult. It can be hard to get folks out there. Um, air conditioning units. Uh, that's a huge issue. Obviously, when people's air conditioning's go out, they get very upset and very grumpy. Mm -hmm. um, but just so you guys know, they do prioritize those calls. So say for instance, if it's you have two air conditioning units and uh, you have two air conditioning units, one of yours goes out, you have one air conditioning unit and yours goes out, well, he's going to get the call first because you could go upstairs or you could go downstairs where it's cooler. Also, um, if somebody has special needs or disabled or there's elderly or there's some kind of medical condition, those, those folks always take priority, um, especially on those weekend calls. So. All right. Well, thanks so much for breakfast. All right, thank you, thanks guys. Thanks for the pamphlets, the documents that you show us. Where would you like me to? I know I've left some before, but where would you like me to? Well, we we have room in our mail room for just kind of the general information.
Anything beyond that, you need to call Sherry, and I'm sure she'd be happy to bring anything by for you if you need door hangers or door protectors or anything like that. So okay. just give her a call. And there's room up there for your business card. Okay. We kind of ended up with too much. I understand. So we've kind of limited it to just your primary plan information and maybe your business card. So after that, you need to call the reps, and they'll be had to what? They'll be glad to bring you any of the additional information that they've got. So thank you. All right. All right, thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. All right. Um, let's talk about the concert. So, Christine, you want to talk about Friday and some of the opportunities that agents have? Sure. Um, so I'm gonna, this is the volunteer sheet. We do need a few more volunteers, so if y'all could just sign up, I'd really appreciate that. Just pass it around. Um, so this Friday night, um, it was a really special concert. And the one we got the Fab Five coming out, which Woo! is a hugely popular <laughs> band here in Houston. Um, and they're a ton of fun. Um, secondly, we've got our Agent Appreciation Night, so this is a great opportunity to invite agents you've done business with in the past to come on out. Uh, Cafe Du Bois is uh, catering, um, and so we'll have food from Cafe Du Bois and uh, drinks and a nice um, seating area for our guests to come and hang out at. Um, and then, finally, oh, uh, we also have our giveaway that ends Thursday night. So you guys spread the word. It's a text. It's four tickets to the Texas Renaissance Festival. And they can sign up either via our Facebook page or our website, OK? So you all spread the word on that. Um, and then finally, ways to use the concert to market yourself. We talked about this last concert, so I'm just going to give you a couple of reminders. Um, you can uh, bring a listing sheet of available houses in the area. We have a huge kids' corner, if you guys haven't been out there. And we have a ton of families come to that kids' corner. I've never seen less than 50 families there in one night, OK? Um, I have a sign-up sheet they all sign up on, so I can actually verify that number. So it's a great place to meet new families and new people to the area. Um, a lot, we get a lot of people from the apartment complexes next to the park, too. So those are, I think, prime buyers um, that you guys could really get in with um, right there at the concert. Um, and if you have something physical to show them, like, hey, these are listings in your area, possibly within your price range, give it to them. Hey, you could get a new client for a night. Um, the marketing tent. Another great way to market yourself. When you are in the marketing tent, you can do whatever you want to to market yourself. Okay? If you want to put a poster board up with your listings in the area, do it. If you want to have a big, huge sign with face on it, do it. But okay? it's you being at the marketing tent. Yes, but you have to be at the marketing yeah. tent. Okay? So um, that's a great place to go ahead and volunteer. Um, but your only responsibility is there are hang out popcorn and be available to answer questions and to market yourself. So it's a great opportunity. Um, beyond that, uh, something new we'll have at this concert is we're going to be handing out flyers to the guests, um, advertising the next, um, well, it's Shred Day, and then also how to enter the monthly giveaway. So if you want to do that, you just come meet me at the marketing tent, and that gives you a good opportunity to go around the crowd and just meet people, introduce yourself, give them your business card and a flyer. So um, I think that's, oh, and so one more thing. Uh, we talked last time about possibly doing a miniature event that you could host within the concert, OK? So invite five families out. Have a kind of a gourmet picnic for them. Have it all set up uh, whenever they get there, and just kind of spoil our guests. Um, it's a great way just to relate to somebody, build a relationship um, on a very personal level um, that would allow you to keep that relationship going for years to come. So any questions? I think open house flyers are another great way. So if you're planning to do open houses this weekend, what better way to get um, folks to come by but to bring out open house flyers on Friday evening and pass them out? So I, I love that's the one I would be doing if I was an agent. So um, I just put in a plug. I got uh, a listing from the concert. Woo! -hoo. Concert. Good. 1, Let's talk briefly because um, it was on my mind this morning, and just to make sure everybody kind of knows what our weather plan is. Justin, we've got a cool front coming through Houston this week, and we want, did I miss out? Did I stop talking? Yes. Well, congratulations. yay, you got a listing. Woo! Uh, we're getting too many listings. We need more listings. So I wanted to talk briefly about weather. So let's talk about the weather plan for Friday, because we do have a cool front coming into the Houston area this week. Mm -hmm. So can we talk a little bit about yeah. how, how we'll communicate that and at what points we'll be making decisions? Sure. Um, so if you guys will sign up for the community newsletter, um, which is on our website on the home page, um, you will get any rainout notices. Okay. So And from there, you can send that out to your network. So we should be able to get a, a big part of our normal crowd um, through that. Beyond that, we'll be posting any rainout notices right um, on Facebook. Um, Twitter. Twitter, yep, all the social media outlets, and then also I'll put out signs, big signs, um, out of the park to 
let everybody else know um, that's what's going on. We also have an e uh, we did an evite for all of our agent area um, guests, and so we can certainly send an yep. email out to them too. Yep. But um, there is a chance of rain on Friday, and if that comes to pass, then we'll obviously make um, arrangements as early in the day as we can, so that people can get the word out and uh, make alternative plans. Yep. So. And we have to decide Thursday. We have to decide Thursday morning, uh, just because of. The uh, Yeah, costs, even on costs, we decided for Thursday morning. Okay. So, Thursday morning, you guys <coughs> should know. Them, right? Yeah, you, you guys should know. But I did, um, the rain percentages are dropping a little bit. They were 70% yesterday, now they're like 50 and 40% today. So, keep your fingers crossed, do your animating dance. It'll be fine. <laughs> we need for all the people in Galveston to kind of breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that weather a little further south, I think, would be a collective. <laughs> I do it, so. All right, um, let's talk briefly about a market and how we're doing. So what I've got for you this morning is some market dynamic reports um, <coughs> for our primary markets here. And we'll start with area 32, and then we'll talk about area 1, and then I also have some information on area 40. So I tried to label them a little better up at the top so you could keep track of them, because I know sometimes it's hard to read down at the very bottom where it actually Give you the area information. All right, so the first one I think I passed around was area 32. It looks like this. Well, they all kind of look like that, but it says area 32 up in the top right corner. So for those of you that might be guests or new agents um, that are still trying to kind of learn the market here in Houston, our MLS takes our entire Houston area and divides it into numeric zones. Area, area 32 is what I always consider to be Kingwood proper, the original Kingwood development. So north of us here, just across the river, all the way up to the Montgomery County line, and out towards 59, so that's what I kind of consider to be Kingwood proper, um, the original Kingwood development, although Kingwood's kind of spread out over on this side of the river and over into Oakhurst, it's the original Kingwood development there on the north side of the river and east of Highway 59. So you'll see on here that it's got a trend line for um, the number of homes that are for sale, you've really got three different numbers. I, I wish I could print it all in color, but we are a profit share company, so we're saving on color printouts, right? So you've got three different numbers, or three different graphs that are on here. You've got the, the number of homes that are for sale um, is the first line. The second line is any properties that are under contract. That's what UC stands for, also known as pending transactions. And then, of course, we've got our sole transactions. This takes a two-year time period and gives you the history of how that market has looked over the last two years, going back to August of 2012, and what a difference two years can make. Everyone see the big difference, and even just the number of homes for sale, it's almost half. So we were at 600 units for sale in August of 2012, and now we're just over 350. <coughs> Number of homes for sale, though, has remained fairly consistent. Uh, back in August of 2012, the number of homes closed was 123, and this past month, it was seven more. So 130 units closed in August. So you can see how those, I, I put that uh, linear line on there, so you can see how those are really starting to shrink down uh, together. But you can also see how we're starting to see a little trend line at the very end of the number of homes on the market starting to trend back up, uh, which is kind of interesting here at the end of the summer to see that happen. And I've talked with a few of you, um, and I think we'll even see it in some of the other markets. Um, this has been an odd year. I want to go like this. Yeah. Odd year. <laughs> and I think what has happened for a lot of people that were thinking about selling their homes in 2014 
In the past, we were all used to putting our homes on the market the week after spring break, right? Yeah. That was it. We were all just busy little bees the week after spring break. And although we were busy then, there wasn't just this influx of the market in, um, in the early part of the year. So what I think has happened is people have slowly put their houses on the market because they then are starting to find what they might be looking for. So we've seen more of a trickling effect of listings coming on the market in 2014 compared to um, prior years. So um, I think we're starting to see that trend line kind of come back up a little bit um, here at the end of the year and hopefully we'll start to see more uh, loosening of the market and start to see more of a choice uh, for people to take a look at. I, I've had, it's been funny to talk to agents. I think Donna and I were talking the other day. She was saying she's getting ready to go show somebody houses. She goes, I think we have two to look at. You know, that there really wasn't going to take long because that's about all they had as far as a choice in their price range and what they were looking for was basically two houses. So um, hopefully we'll start seeing that um, loosen up a little bit more because it's nice to have a choice. Behind that, on the back side of it, you'll see all the data. So if you're really one of those folks that likes to see the actual numbers rather than the pretty colors or lines like I do, then you can actually look at the data on page two. Behind that, I've given you the average price per square foot for Area 32 in both the for sale and in the sold. So, we're seeing that um, the houses for sale, price per square foot, is outpacing a little bit of the um, actual price that homes are selling for. Homes for sale, price per square foot, has gone up 23% over the last two years, and the sold volume has only gone up 19% on a price per square foot for Area 32. Would you say that means for overpricing our Well, I think there's always going to be um, a little bit of a, a larger gap between the two. Um, right now in, um, let's see, we're pricing them right now at $107 a square foot on average and they're selling for $94 a square foot. Um, whereas back two years ago we were pricing them at $87 a square foot and they were selling at $79 a square foot. Okay, So the gap of where we were pricing and selling has widened. And part of that, I think, has come from the fact that the clients, or especially sellers, are reading the newspaper. Right. You know, we should be able to get big numbers. Yeah. And uh, we want to push that that upper limit to see what we might be able to get. We can always come down. So um, I think it's up to us as realtors to help educate our clients to um, show them that even though pricing at high doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that money, because here's the data. Is showing that houses are actually selling um, for a bigger percentage or a larger percentage less than what they're being sold for today or what they're being asked for today than they were two years ago on average. Now, that always comes down to particular neighborhoods, particular price points, things like that. But I think that's good data to have with a client when maybe you're having that preliminary conversation about pricing is to say, well, I've noticed a trend where clients are starting to ask more than what the market really is bearing out. Would that be a true statement based on this data? Yes. So there's a great sentence that you can use with your clients if they're thinking about their pricing. And then again, right behind that, on the back side of that, you've got the, um, the data. Third chart behind Area 32 package is the market share by units. Uh, showing that REMAX Associates Northeast has got 23.11%. We've got just over 10.5%, and then it drops off to 5.5% and really drops off after that. So uh, we're still um, in the top two as far as the market share in Area 32. I want to get it back. back. Why are we, we are so far beyond REMAX? Well... Um, that's a great question. Why do you think we're so far behind REMAX? I don't know, because we are all working hard. <laughs> <laughs> do you think um, we're doing a great job of um, our agents that focus on the, the Area 32 um, marketing to Area 32? I'm or calling sure. their clients? or I'm pretty sure that everybody is trying. Yeah. 
Well, it's one of those things that we continuously work on. And at one time, we had um, the, the, the market share in Area 30, in area 32. And then what happened was the REMAX offices combined so that they could take over the market share in Area 32. Um, and that's been a challenge to get that, that back. Um, and part plus, the market in Area 32 compared to Area 1 is a smaller market. There's not as many homes. So it's actually a smaller market than Area 1. When we look at the numbers, you'll see that. Okay. okay? Thank you. But I wanted to give you the real numbers you. so you have those. All right, let's look at Area 1. So again, for those of you who are new to the business and are still trying to learn the MLS areas, we are sitting in Area 1. So Area 1 starts at the river uh, just north of us here and goes all the way south to the Beltway and maybe a little on the other side of the Beltway. It goes to the other side of the lake into the Huffman-Crosby communities and goes as far west as 59, or maybe even on the other side of 59, doesn't it? Where does Area 12 pick up? Anybody know off the top of their head? The Further, the mall kind of on the back side of that. So um, Area 1 pretty much ends at Highway 59. So it's kind of this quadrant kind of south of us here. Um, so again, you've got the same information here on Area 1. So we've got the three um, pieces of information, number of properties for sale and the number of properties um, sold uh, under contract and sold. So back in 2012, we had over 1,200 units available for sale. And as of last month, it was down to just less than 800 units. And oh, FYI, this does not include new construction. I pulled all new construction out. And then I wanted, I wanted to really look at resale. So just FYI. Um, Sold, we sold, closed 214 units back in August of 2012 and up 50 more units in 2014, 264 units, so a 23% increase in the number of units um, sold. Behind that, you've got the price per square foot information. Now this one's interesting compared to Area 32. I know. So you guys remember Area 32 had a bigger increase in what was being offered for sale in comparison to what was being closed. Mm -hmm. Here, they're very close. In fact, the sold number is a little higher than the um, list price on a percentage increase standpoint. Mm -hmm. So it stayed fairly consistent. So I say Area 1 has um, done probably a better job of not getting into the price craze of let's try to see what we can get um, type of, of pricing. So I thought that was an interesting number. And then under below that, you've got the, the market share totals. So um, we lead, obviously, in area one with 9.5% um, of the market share, and then it drops off down into the 4% range and below for the other competitors. Yeah. So. Woo -hoo! Yeah. I got a listing. Wait. I have a feeling I'm going to pay for that. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> area 40. So on Area 40, I've done the exact same thing. So Area 40 has got um, the, the three pieces of information. Uh, what's been interesting in Area 40 is that the resale has not dropped as much as it did in areas 1 and area 32. Um, it's only gone down 13%. Um, percent. The others had much larger uh, decreases in the number of units for sale. So we've only gone down from 396 units back in August of 2012 to 343 units. Um, under contract has dramatically increased, almost doubled, 67.5%. Um, and the number of units closed has gone up 36.5%. So some fairly significant um, changes in um, area 40 as far as the volume, just the number of properties for sale hasn't changed dramatically over two years. So. What is the area? Do what? Yeah. what area, okay, area 40, thank you. Area 40 is what I would call East Montgomery County. So kind of west of 59, starting kind of at the mall, not the mall, the, the hospital and the college, and then going north 
um, up through the Porter, New Caney, Splendora markets, even up New Roman Forest, all those neighborhoods there. So all oh, that's Area 40. So we'll see, I think, um, some interesting things in Area 40 with the Grand Parkway opening next year. Um, that'll be interesting to see how Area 40 continues to uh, evolve. And then behind that, I did the um, price per square foot. Um, you've got the price per square foot for sale has increased 31%, but only on the sold by 23.5%, similar to um, kind of what Kingwood has done um, as far as gaps are concerned. But the prices have gone up nicely, 23.5% increase in price per square foot on average in Area 40 over two years. That's a nice appreciation for those properties in Area 40. I didn't do market share in Area 40. I just did the, the market dynamic reports. Any questions on any of these? Any ahas? All right, let's talk a little bit about how our office is doing. You guys saw the email that I sent out uh, before we closed the books talking about how close we were to breaking an all-time record here at the office. And so I wanted to share some information with you about how our office did in August and how we've done year to date, along with some of the other milestones that we've got out there as potential um, challenges that we want to um, break those records to. Um, as leadership, we always challenge our agents to know your numbers, right? I love meeting with an agent, and I pull up their broker metrics report, and I say, hey, you're up 25% over last year. And they go, oh, I knew I was busier, but I had no idea how much busier I was. So we kind of like to have our agents know, how, you know, know those numbers so that you can be tracking your progress towards your eventual goal and knowing what you need to be doing for the upcoming year. We're kind of in that time period where we're all starting to start thinking about our 2015 goals as we move into our fourth quarter. So I want to kind of share some numbers with you. So I did some research. I dug back probably about, well, I went all the way back to 2002 and looked at some numbers. So 12 years ago, to kind of pull up some information for you guys so you could see how we're doing. So looking at agent count. Agent count, um, our biggest agent count was 198. And that was in May of 2008. Right now, our agent count is at 171. So we're closing in on um, being as large as we were um, five years ago, six years ago. Listings taken units. So these are the number of units of listings taken for sale. And when we talk about volume and units, we're only talking about for sale numbers. We're not talking about for leases. <laughs> so listings taken unit, our high number there was 239. And that was done in June of 2006. And as of this month, oops, Can you tell there's been a big change in the number of listings out there in the market? 146 compared to 239 um, eight years ago. Listing volume, our biggest number there was 41.3 million. And that was done in uh, June of 2006. So it kind of uh, coincided with the number of units. So our, listing taken, our listings uh, taken this past month was 32.1 million. Price points going up. Yes. Yeah, big time. Profit share. Our biggest profit share month was done in May of 2006, and it was $43,061. And this past month was a mass profit share. We did uh, 40,481. So we're very close to beating our all-time goal on uh, profit share. Closed units. So again, 
Uh, this is only on closed sales, not any leases. Our closed units for the month um, <coughs> was done in August of 2006 of 255. And this last month, we did 233. Now, if you ask Pam, she knows there were more. <laughs> uh, and Vicki and everybody else that was back there just going through the computers. There was smoke coming out of their offices for the last couple of days. That's a lot of transactions that we closed during the month of, of August. 233 uh, closed units. So congratulations to you guys. And then closed volume. So prior to this past month, our closed volume was... August of 2006, and it was 44.7 million. And you guys blew through it, and we closed 47,180,976 dollars of real estate during the month of August of 14. So how does all that, um, and especially with our closed volume here in August of this year, relate to how we plan to do for the year? So, sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> so let me share with you how we're doing on our goals. So every year, our ALC and our leadership gets together and looks at our trend lines, looks at how we're going to grow, what we think the market's going to do, and comes up with our goals of, of what we think the upcoming year is going to do. So we did this pack in November of 2013 and set our goals for 2014. And we said that we were going to close $402 million worth of closed volume um, this year, that we were going to list $250 million worth of real estate, that we would write $419 million worth of real estate. Everyone understands what written volume is? Written volume means we're going to write offers, but does every deal close? No. No. So unfortunately, but it does show activity. So we want to have a certain written volume because we know if we have a certain written volume, it's going to relate to a certain closed volume, right? And then we wanted to have profit share of just over $229,000 in profit share. So here's how we are currently on track for our goals based on the first eight months of this year. Right now, if you took what we have done and annualized it out, we're going to be at 378.8 million in closed volume. So we're only about 40 million short, 35 million dollars short. So how much was that listing you got? <laughs> <laughs> listing volume. Right now, we're on track for 260 million. Point two in listing volume. So if we stay on track with what we've got to list over the next uh, four months, we should exceed our listing volume goal, which is great news. Written volume. Right now, we're on track to write $406 million worth of real estate. So we're very close, only $15 million away from our written volume goal of $419 million. And profit share, this is what gets me excited, is we had a goal for 229,150, which was a big goal. Uh, right now, we are on track for 226,067 in profit share, uh, given back to our stakeholders at Keller Williams. So if everything, the trend lines continue for the remaining portion of the year, that should be close to where we end up. But of course, as we get closer every month that we close, it becomes clearer and clearer as we're going to have to do. These are straight annualized numbers. They're not seasonalized or anything like that. It's basically taking what we've done for the year, dividing it by 8, and multiplying it times 12. That gives us what we believe our annualized numbers are going to come out with. So you guys can do the exact same thing. Um, you should have on your dashboards now, when you log into your mykw.com, you'll have your year to date. Take it. Divide it by 8, multiply it times 12. That's where you should end up for the year. And if you're not happy with that number, there's some things that you can do to start changing how your um, year will end up. Some of you may go, oh, wow, I'm blowing through what I thought I would do. Well, guess what you should do? 
reassess your goals. Go, oh, boy, did I miss that. Now I have a better idea of where I'm really on track for and what I need to plan for for 2015. Pam, <laughs> 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 hey, come get the spider. <laughs> All right, so um, that's our market share report that kind of shows where we are year to date. I hope you guys will take some of these tools and go back and look at your own business and figure out where you are year to date and what your goals are for 2014 and start thinking about your 2015 goals because all this information can start feeding into that. So. Jeremy, got anything to add? Um, no, but we do have some guests here that I'd like. Um, if if you get if you're a guest today, if you it's your before, first time in our team meeting, yep. um, even if you're a guest, please stand and introduce yourself. Tom, why don't we start with you? Okay. My name is Tom Holt. I moved to Texas here about a year and a half ago, close to two years, and uh, from California. And I worked for the Caldwell Banker in California for about four years, so I'm here to. Uh, to see how Texas does real estate here, and understand the markets much better here. So that's the main reason I'm here. Yeah. So great. So far, I'm impressed. Good morning. My name is Natasha Bill. And her husband is getting his her, his license and be joining us soon. So we're waiting for that. Larry. Oh, he's not here today. Yeah, oh, not oh, okay. <laughs> Karen, you want to introduce your guest? This is Tony Winslow, and um, stand up. And he's looking at um, becoming an agent. So he's just here for the day today to see what we do and um, see if this is going to be the right fit for him. Great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Colleen LeVere. I'm new to the area and I am a guest of Jeremy's. A guest. He invited me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to play that. Yeah. Great. Tisha, <laughs> how about you? All right. Well, I'm Tisha Lockwood. Um, I've been in the business for a long time, for almost 14 years. Um, I was the Daily really, and just wanted to bring my commercial up the car. I want to stick in there with Anne. So, um, did you also do residential? I do residential too. Yeah. Yes, and I like residential, so I plan on juggling both. We'll see how well that works because I do like to do my own thing, and I try to do like three houses a year if I can. But I've been gone in Chicago for the last three years, so I've been traveling back and forth and it's been a lot on me. So I'm here again and I moved to Crosby because I like country and I have a zoo. So oh, yeah. that's me. Yeah. Well, welcome. And that's yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Janet. Janet's been here before. But okay. Welcome back. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Did we miss anybody? And then following call the meeting, uh, we do have a group of agents that be back here in the back for about an hour and practice role play scripts. Are, are, is there going to be a group today, Robin? Yeah. And we had probably how many last week? Six, six or so. So if you're interested in working on your scripts, uh, whether working with buyers, <laughs> sellers, working on your listing presentation, go back there and hang out with that group. So. All right. All right. And Mega Camp. Oh yes, um, Mega Camp is next week. Um, the leadership, which will be uh, Jeremy, myself, and Pam, will be heading out Sunday evening. We'll be in meetings on um, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, Pam will be returning back on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, she'll be there on Wednesday. So she'll be back in the office on Thursday. Um, and then Jeremy and I will continue in Austin as agents from the office are going to be traveling to Austin on Wednesday 
for either Mega Technology or to be in place for Mega Agent Camp, which starts on Thursday. Um, over the week, they're expecting somewhere around 14,000 different Keller Williams people coming through. Um, some are just coming from leadership. Some are just going for technology. Some of us will be there for the entire week. So uh, a lot of people coming through Austin, Texas, and I'm going to be wearing my Aggie shirt every day. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching the news a little bit. So, um, so for, for us being out, uh, we certainly will be available by cell phone or email. Um, understand, though, that if we don't answer, it's because we're in a session. We're not going to be picking up our phone during sessions. We'll be returning calls um, during breaks and lunch. And um, so we have a few ALC members that will not be going to Mega Agent Camp. And we'll kind of put um, a contact list out of people that are more than happy. If um, you've got a really quick question, you just want to talk to another person, maybe to get confirmation of your decision, we'll be happy to, to pass their um, contact information on and You can um, reach out to those guys. So that's next week. So we've got a busy week um, in Austin. Uh, we had an agent that um, has listed Judy Hopkins' house. All right. And because it's Judy's house, it would be awesome if um, we could bring the buyer to the transaction. I think that would make somebody very happy up in heaven. Yes, may want to know. Well, it could be a condition to sell the house, or Nicola Williams' agent. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, Judy Hopkins is um, our former uh, broker and owner here at the office. Um, she basically bought the franchise from the original uh, franchise owner back in the early 90s um, and, and brought the company to the, to the point that it is today. Um, she was diagnosed with leukemia in August of 2012 and then unfortunately lost that battle on July 25th of this year. So um, her, she has a beautiful home out on Lake Houston that she uh, built, and uh, Donna Wilson is the listing agent on it. So Donna, while I'm pulling this up, okay. you want to come up and talk a little bit about it? Okay, so some people don't understand how special the other side of the lake is, but it is, and uh, <laughs> I happen to be uh, all for that because I live over there. She lives in on what we call Skiers Cove on the lake. It is one of the deepest part of the lakes, and it's also, mm -hmm. her elevation is, you'll see, very high. I mean, when you're standing on her balcony looking out at Lake Shore and Water's Edge across the lake like that, you can see it's almost like you're on top of the mountain if there was a mountain on Lake Houston. So she's got a very beautiful elevation. And, um, the home is priced at $545,999. Um, some of the features, it's a, a 3,700 square feet, through be three bedroom. Um, <clears throat> it has a gate entry on the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful granite in the kitchen, beautiful light oak cabinets throughout. Um, it's a gorgeous home. Um, it's got a generator for the home, which is valued at $25,000. It's got an outdoor mosquito sprayer, water mm -hmm. softener, um, <clears throat> two endless water tanks, um, two different attics, three-car garage, um, built-in uh, refrigerator, um, several other things that are just very unique about the home, and you're going to see this. Um, Ready? It's got the pavers that, that graduate tear down. Um, she does. She's does not have a boat lift. She shared that with her daughter, and um, but there's room for a dock. But there's room for a dock. I think you know, plenty of room there. You just place that where you want to for your view. But it's just you just just don't get this everywhere. And three months out of the year, one of the neighbors says that she gets sunrise and sunset. So you, but from sitting on your balcony, you can see both just the way the sun and the, its position. So. So I want to make her proud, and I feel like she's watching us, and I think she wants someone good in that home, and that's the emotional side of that. Um, so I would love to see us sell it before it goes on the MLS if we could find a good buyer. 
Um, her daughter lives next door, and of course she wants a good neighbor. But um, anyway, we're, I'm hoping that we will show Judy we can do this for her without it even having to get to know us. So reaching out to y'all to see if there's some line. Tax rate is only uh, 3.01, which makes it amazing. Where it's not in the city of Houston, so it's not taxed by the city of Houston. Um, HOA is only 250 a year versus if you were on water and edge, it would be 1,200 a year. So we're just less expensive over there, and we have nice deep water. <laughs> and um, you know, so it's a special place to be. It's quiet, friendly. The home itself was custom built, I believe, by Chris, wasn't it? So, oh, Covenant Home. And um, it just has a lot of special features. So, this is a $10,000 aroma therapy tub that she had put in. But if a buyer needs that to be changed out, they kept the bar cut. Judy loved angels, so she has the leaded glass on that door is the image of an angel. There is a, a, an attic door here that could be built out to be a small room or a study or something like that if uh, you wanted to. There's room there to build that out. If you have any questions, let me know. It's not on the MLS yet, so I can I'm gonna email the tour out to everyone just through a mass email, and then you can forward that tour to your clients and let them look. And then uh, in about maybe two or three weeks, we have it sold in. <laughs> I'll have to put it on the MLS. You would send the address. Yes, I'll send all the information with the email. sell that out so um, let's see if we can't get it sold in the next couple weeks Donna there should be room for a pool that we just have to recreate well Donna has a pool next Donna door so absolutely uh, another pool could go in there if, if somebody wanted to put a pool in yeah something that could go. yeah what was the most price again 549 yeah. 549 yeah it's at the end of a cul-de-sac um, in a little gated well, it's, not it's not a gated it's community, but it's, 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 the it's the estate section. So it's beautiful. And you've already got neighbors on both sides, so you kind of know what. There's not going to be really anything else that's going to be going up that you kind of wonder what's happening. That's um, kind of a built-out community. Uh, Donna was uh, Judy was one of the first ones to build there at the end of the cul-de-sac and um, built the house. Then her daughter Donna built on one side, and then her mother and dad built on the other side. Um, they've since have sold that house, but um, it's a very quiet. I think it's about four houses on the end of the cul de sac. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, then there's a few more down the street. So. It's a very nice little street. So let's get it sold. Okay? All right, does anybody else have anything else on tour today that they would like to promote? Anybody? Is there anybody at all? Harry? I'm sure y'all got a couple of emails, but Jason, I'm Jason Medley, South and Realtor Tour today. We're going to be leaving shortly to go get Amadeus, so we'll have Southwest Brigatoni. Come out and take a look at this house. We just reduced it to $399.9 on Saturday. It was built in 05. It's a village home. It's got a two-car garage and a port de cachet. 
gorgeous wood floors as you enter the property during the study, formal dining, into the family room. Master down, of course. Um, upstairs, there's three bedrooms, two full baths, and a game room. Beautiful kitchen. And they put in a pool and a hot tub about two years ago. Gorgeous. And there's a large um, covered patio. It's a 10 by 29 covered patio. So y'all come out, think about who you have that's ready to close on a house at the end of October so we can get this sold for Jason and Emily. We'll also be offering, um, Jason's going to be, there's going to be a drawing for a free will and estate planning. So this is a, a really nice package if you haven't <laughs> done any estate planning. So by, just by stopping by, you'll be entered in that drawing. So it's at 6003 Chevy Birch Hollow in Kings Point. Okay. Um, 1130 to 2. I wanted to get the food there before people start showing up. So yeah. Anybody else got something on tour they want to share tonight? If they got a buyer looking for something they can't find, Clint. Um, I actually have something on tour next week. But okay. I'm already going to be at Mega Camp yeah. next Tuesday, so I wouldn't mind making the announcement sure. now. Um, uh, a new listing out in Huffman that I have was built by Laura. Those of you um, familiar with the Laura Homes, that built just a gorgeous house. Um, but uh, it, uh, it's a uh, three, four uh, of the media room, game room, very nice, two acre lot, and that sort of thing. So I'll have it on tour next uh, next week. And because I know it's hard to get people over the bridge sometimes to tour, uh, I have a lot of drawings and lunch. So we're going to have five $10 gas car drawings. Okay, so five of the people that show up will have their gas covered. There'll be a $100 gift card drawing for everybody, so at least six people will win something. And then there'll also be uh, uh, lunch, you know, like a silver dollar sandwiches and lunch also next week. So 11 to 2 is your planning touring next week. I'll send an email out before I leave, too. Okay. A fourth one. Diane? Um, I'm going to get listed and it should be coming on Friday or Saturday. And you know, I just want to give you a head start. It's your buyer friend. It's in Trailwood. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath. Um, it's going to be 230 ish. We have it from the price. One story, two story. It's a two story. Okay. Um, the, reno uh, the kitchen was fully renovated, very high end appliances, nice custom granite, and new cabinets. Look Pull out built in uh, storage room. Um, it has a lot of nice lifestyle additions like the gas grill in the backyard, a 400 square foot uh, workshop attached to the garage, but, but it's, it's uh, still a full two car garage and it's an air conditioned ducted workshop um, with the custom cabinet. Wow. Uh, it has a full uh, one of those generac full mount generators. Um, the bathroom needs some updating. The, um, the uh, master has the, a walk-in uh, tub slash shower, which may not work for everyone. It goes the one where you close the door and it's jet, it uh, works great for sleep. But, um, but it, it's it's uh, report soon. What street's it on? Pardon me? What street? It's on Grove Lane. Okay. And if, if you're interested in seeing it before it comes on this weekend, I can maybe make a right here. They're just moving out the last few blocks. Right. Okay. Great listing. Anything else? Susan? Anybody would like to take a flyer for an open house for uh, Friday to the concert? I have a one story in Walden, about 1,800 square feet, three bedrooms, two baths, listed at 164. Uh, anybody wants to have an open house? Okay. Taken. At least for one day. Maybe another day, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, Donna. Okay, I'm putting on a house in Bear Branch today. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, and a cul de sac. Okay. What? Don't put it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you can tell the seller when I put it on. <laughs> 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 um, formal living dining, they, uh, consecutive formal living dining, as you enter, they put in wood floors there. They are gorgeous. And they put the same floors in the master which is downstairs, and it's huge. Upstairs, they put in new carpet. Our carpet was replaced this year. Um, covered patio, screened-in porch on the back of the house. Very nice house. In a cul de sac. It'll be listed at 234.9. It'll be going on the market late this afternoon. I would suggest, if you have anybody interested. How many houses are on the market in Bear Branch right now? Yes, there were three. Today, it's going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's three. But anyway. Um, let me go on the market today. So if you have a buyer who wants to be a fair branch at that price point, move. <laughs> 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 um, five bedroom, pool, 
five bedrooms. Five bedroom wow. and bear branch to the pool. More details to come shortly. So if you have a bear branch fire, let me know. I'd like to sell them before you put. I'd like to go active option pending. I know right. saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your checkbook. All right, Courtney. Stand up. I can't hear you. Or you're in the Parker's Landing over off 45 to 242. Yeah. Of course, Woodland is a great little starter home if anyone has any land. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's about 1,500 square feet. It's been updated real nicely and really nice covered patio. So it'll be on uh, hopefully Thursday. Okay. It's 158 time. Wow. And a good, great rental property. I have a Do you have a new, new listing? <laughs> <laughs> And there's a marketing committee meeting immediately following this. So for those that um, would like to be a part of that and um, understand a little bit more about how they work, uh, especially with our upcoming concert for this Friday night, um, encourage everyone to stay and, and participate in that. So. And my email that I sent out yesterday included some other activities that are going on this week. We have a lunch and learn tomorrow by Perry Holmes. Um, I think there was one other thing in my email, but I can't remember off the top of my head. So check the calendar. KWNEEvents.com will take you straight to the calendar, and you can. Or random, um, random do acts of kindness. Do what? Oh, random, random acts of kindness, yes. Um, and continuing our September theme of random acts of kindness, um, keep that in your, your mind as you're going through your day, as you're seeing people um, in our community, if there's a way for you to perform a random act of kindness, uh, we'd love for you to, um, to keep that activity going. And if you would like to share your story, there's a treasure chest just outside my door with a uh, place where you can drop your story in there. And um, we'll share some of those at our celebration on October 3rd. And we want the box to be full. Yes. And we've got to get out there and be kind. Yeah. <laughs> randomly. <laughs> if you can't think of one, we'll randomly think of something for you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>